Welcome back, and thank you for tuning in to learn about costs and cost behavior. In the last video, we introduced managerial accounting. By the end of this video, you will develop an appreciation for different types of organizational costs, how they behave with organizational activity, and why analysis of these two aspects is important. At the highest level, all organizations have two types of costs from a reporting perspective, product or service costs and period costs. Product or service costs are those necessary to create a product or service. These would include costs that can be directly associated to a product or service such as direct labor or material. Period costs, on the other hand, are not incurred to create a product or service and therefore cannot be assigned to them. These are necessary costs to run an organization. For example, selling and administration expenses. Managers need to know how to measure, record, and report different types of costs. Knowing what they are can help make informed decisions. Understanding them helps one understand the true cost of an organization. Different organizations use different systems to account for costs, but the most commonly used ones are process and job order costing. Earlier, we looked at how costs can be classified into product and period costs from a reporting perspective. But the same costs can be classified in other ways for different purposes. For example, costs can be classified as direct and indirect to help with accurately tracking costs pertaining to a job. Similarly, they can be classified as opportunity, incremental, and marginal to help identify what's relevant and what's not. Finally, costs can be classified as fixed, variable, or mixed to understand the relationship between cost, volume, and profit. Let's explore how costs behave at different levels of organizational activities. Managers and decision makers classify organizational costs differently to understand how they behave at varying level of activity and make decisions based on such analysis. For example, fixed costs. These are costs that do not change with increases in business activity. Variable costs. They tend to increase or decrease in proportion to an increase or decrease in business activity. An example is material or labor that goes in production. Mixed costs. These have elements of both fixed and variable costs. For example, utilities. Stepped costs. These are constant within a particular level of activity, but can increase when activity reaches a critical level. An example is heating costs after expansion of a building. Average costs. This is a total of both fixed and variable costs divided by the total number of units produced. The two most common costs are variable and fixed. You can find them in almost any organization. Variable costs are those that vary in total with changes in activity but remain fixed per unit. You can see this relationship in the graphs on the left. In contrast, fixed costs are those that remain the same in total regardless of level of activity, but they vary per unit. The graphs on the right shows this relationship. At times, there are costs that are mixed and contain both variable and fixed elements. These costs change in total but not proportionately with changes in activity level. For example, telephone bills. It is important to break mixed costs into fixed and variable to do further managerial analysis because the separation allows us to conduct cost-volume-profit analysis. So what is a cost-volume-profit analysis? It's a technique that can be used alongside cost behavior information to help managers prepare useful planning analysis. It deals with how revenue and costs vary with a change in service level. By studying the relationship of costs, service volume, and revenue, managers will be able to make better and informed decisions. However, when we conduct a cost volume profit analysis, we make certain assumptions since we are using this tool as a planning exercise to make future decisions. For example, we assume that the selling price per unit will always remain constant. Similarly, we assume that variable costs per unit will also remain constant, and so would the total fixed costs. The truth is, this is rarely the case in the real world. We also assume that a business will sell everything that they produce. Another assumption is that it's easy and always possible to differentiate between fixed and variable costs. Despite these assumptions falling flat occasionally, cost volume profit analysis is a widely used and popular management tool that helps us make better decisions. It allows us to determine the break-even points, meaning a level of business activity where the revenues are equal to the costs a no-profit, no-loss scenario. And this type of analysis helps managers decide what they want to sell, how much they want to sell it for, and what quantity they want to sell. Cost volume profit analysis does not show up in financial reports, but managers, even in non-profits, find it a very useful tool. 
Check out the graph on the right. The graph shows the relationship between costs of producing and overall revenue generated by selling what was produced. It helps one ascertain the impact changes in sales volume may have on actual costs and profits. We hope this video has been helpful in demonstrating the basics about costs and how they behave with respect to changing organizational activity. Subscribe to our channel and find us on our socials for future tutorials. See you next time.